Oh, I'm here with my FT710, and I'm working on getting it hooked up to Log for Old Men. If you haven't used this program before, it is a really fantastic logging piece of software that also allows you to control your radio with your computer and many other things. You can download it for free, and I would encourage you to give it a look. This logger is chock full of features, so getting it set up can be a little bit of a challenge. As you can see here on their site, they offer award tracking, call lookup, supported by multiple external sources, propagation analysis, net control feature, full SOTA and IOTA support, full integration of log of the world, EQSL, QRZ, and a bunch of others. Obviously there's Radio Cat control that I mentioned a moment ago. All of them are great features, but it comes with a pretty long settings menu here. So let's walk through the three things you need to know in order to get it up and running. We're not going to try to look at everything, but just get you up and going. As I mentioned already, I assume you've already downloaded the program. If you have not, head over to LOG number four om.com and hit that download button. It's as easy as that. I also am assuming that you have gone to Yesu's site, looked up the FT710 and downloaded and installed their drivers for the FT710. That is required in order to make this work. So make sure you install that, hook up the proper USB cable and let's dive into those settings. So the first thing we're going to do after the software is up and running is we're going to go to program configuration. The first thing you need to do here is set up a database. You can look at the program, but you can't really do anything else without a database set. You will go to database and you have two options here, SQLite and MySQL. SQLite is the obvious choice for most users. You need to be logging over 150,000 contacts in order for MySQL to be useful for you. And you'll want to create a new database and then you're off to the races. Notice that it does by default get placed into your documents. So you'll be able to look at that folder, know where it is um, for future reference. Next, we're going to be going down to cat control. Notice it says cat interface right there. That's what we're going to be looking at. And you have a main setting along with three methods in which you can control the radio. Um, there's OmniRig, HamLib, and then you can control it via the network, TCI. OmniRig is the simplest of setup I found. However, it does not offer native FT710 support you can use the FTDX10. I've tried that, it does work. You can't use all the features, but it will connect and allow you to change the frequencies and other things you might want to do. Hamlib is the CAT engine that I chose. Notice the options here in the drop down, so you just want to select one of those. And then the other thing, make sure you click CAT Auto Start. That just saves you some time when the program starts up. It is ready to go when you turn your radio on and will automatically connect. Nice, handy feature. Then you're going to need to pop over to the HamLib tab here. This sort of things are a little bit more complicated. Pick your radio from the list. Then you will need to select the correct COM port, baud rate, stop bit, and then also the push to talk if you want to try that. Select the correct port for that. The manual tells you the correct baud rate seen in this screenshot. You can also see it in the radio. I have a picture of it. The stop bits are also listed there. The correct COM port is something that you'll need to select based on what you see in the device manager. You can go to the start menu and type device manager. You can right click on the start button and also find that listed there on Windows 11. And we are going to be looking at the ports most of the way down the list here and looking at Silicon Labs Dual CP2105 USB. There's two of them here. One is enhanced and one is standard. The enhanced one is for controlling the radio. The standard is for the audio. And you can see that confirmed 
in this screenshot from the manual. So once you've noted that down, then you'll find it very easy to select the correct COM port for each of these two options. I'm not going to be covering push to talk, but I did, did want to mention that there's several options here. I chose CAT. And what you're going to notice now is as you've made these selections, more options, more things are being listed in this generated parameter string. And the use parameter string turns red. And you'll need to click a line once you've made all your selections in order for this to be configured correctly for your 7.10. Once you've made all the selections, we're done with CAT interface. We can save this configuration if you're doing this for the first time. I'm coming back here and looking through this stuff, so I'm going to be save and apply to make sure everything is done the way I wanted it to. And we're on to our final thing for this tutorial. That is the Telnet. We're going to go to connect. You can see Telnet cluster there is the first option. Opens this window and has several tabs here that are going to be of interest to us. Uh, we're going to go over to connection. Because I've set this up before, it is connecting automatically. We'll just disconnect that here for the moment. And just a quick tip here, if you want to add a new Telnet server, you will need to disconnect in order for you to do this part of the process. It can be a little frustrating to figure that out if you aren't very familiar with this piece of software. So you're given a long list here that you can choose from. And what you're seeing here are databases that are populated by people who are spotting operating stations. They could be DX, they could be POTA, SOTA, they could be something else, special operating stations. But it does help you navigate and find contacts a little easier. So that's very cool. The And we'll see a little bit more about that here in a moment. So let's say I wanted to add this one to my active servers. You click on it and click the plus button and then it shows up down here below in your active servers. I'm not going to add this one that time at this time, but that's how that process works. So remove that and then all we need to do is click connect and notice we're kicked back over to here to the management tab and you'll see activity. We're connecting via the internet to those resources. And if we go over here to the cluster window over time, spots will start to populate in this window. Notice how uh, we have statistics, filters, beam, view, um, different options here. The filters one is going to be your first thing you want to start looking at. Uh, first you're going to click your band and then you're going to want to click the mode that you want to look for and then that will dictate what shows up in your cluster window. Now we don't have to have this separate floating window. We can go ahead and close that and we're going to see by default in log for old men you're going to be seeing the main window. It gives you the world map gives you a map on the right here that will allow you to zoom in on the specific place where a contact is or where you are. So let's go ahead and click on this contact, potential contact here on 20 meters. And notice on our software here, it's looking up this contact call sign, giving some information about it. And if we look at the main window, we can see where they are in the world. Very, very cool. And if we click the plus sign over here, it will be logged. As we've configured it right now, it would simply be logged in the software. However, you can set it up to auto-populate to your online logging software of choice, QRZ, for example. So there you go. There's a quick rundown on how to get started with your FT710 in Log for Old Men. I hope you have found this useful and that you'll come back for a future video. Talk to you all later.